This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. A little after two in the morning, I guess. The witching hour, as they say. Come to think of it, try not to make a habit of rising out of the ground in the middle of the night. People might take you for a zombie. And whose fault is that, Yuji? I cannot believe what is happening. I cannot believe that Yuji did what he did, and that not only is Michiru and, like, the game being like, oh, what he did wasn't so bad. They're saying, like, oh, he did the right thing. Like, uh-uh. Nope. No. Indeed, Sakaki probably would have pissed herself. <laughs> then he would have been frozen in prison. Frozen? Thrown in prison for first-degree murder. <laughs> it honestly wasn't something I'd thought about. I know you well enough to know you'd find the strength to live all on your own. You can say that, but it's a close thing. So the worst case scenario I planned for wasn't you never coming out. It was you coming out after even more time had passed. For a moment, Michiru seems a bit confused. But then the answer seems to have come to her on its own. Suddenly, she starts squirming around on my back and looking anxiously around the area. How did he put this all together in the span of about 30 minutes, too? Doesn't make sense. He's a terrible person. <laughs> the end. <laughs> We've got two possible emergency countermeasures. First, we could stop by that beach. It's a bit regrettable from an environmental perspective, but I think Mother Earth will understand. What? You were about to toss her life away, weren't you? Surely you can withstand a little humiliation. Alright then, second option, you could always make use of the public facilities just past that bank. Mitru abruptly leaps down and takes off at a clumsy sprint. Well, seems her body's in no hurry to die, at least. How is she not, like, malnourished at this point? Get her some water. <laughs> what are you doing up at three in the morning? Spotting us, Sachi comes brushing the sidewalk and <laughs> stops brushing the sidewalk in front of the gate and approaches with a beaming smile on her face. Sachi apparently doesn't sleep. As for Michiru, after returning from the restroom with a profoundly relieved expression, she hopped right back onto my back to for the walk home. What on earth are you doing up at this hour? Hmm, so it would seem. But isn't it a little late for that? Sachi totally knew! Sachi totally knew. Either she was in on this the whole time, or she figured it out. So you... You never thought she was dead. But you didn't check her... Pulse or call Yuji out on what he was doing. Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense why she wouldn't call it, because she, like, worships the ground Yuji walks on. For, for no reason! <laughs> he is not worthy of this. No, you know what? This is the bad ending. It's just not the bad ending you would expect. <laughs> the bad ending is they get together, and they really shouldn't. You know, I didn't think it would be possible to get worse than blowing up the school. But doggone it, that was probably worse than blowing up the school. Because at least, at least, he, at least there was never going to be anybody who would die in getting the school blown up. Because they always evacuated people long beforehand, and somehow he got permission for it. It didn't make sense, but it, I guess that at least made some level it had some level of understandability i guess even that's a big stretch this no this was so far over the moral event horizon like i don't even know can't even believe it <sighs> how do things stand currently okay get a new principal in this school yeah yeah yumiko is the only normal person here and even that she's not that normal 
ずっと落ち着きがなくてマキちゃんはシャドウ影踏みの練習で気を紛らわせていました Sorry for the trouble. I'll have to explain everything to you all later. Guess I better brace myself for a slapper free. Um, you better brace yourself for having the police called on you and being completely ostracized from everybody. Because that is the proper reaction to have. So, this is me. Sasa, what's got it? Is your car? Oh, for a little soldier standing mascara. Yes, Mitru needs to take a bath. Appreciate it. You really are a maid among maids, Sachi. Still carrying me through, I turn to enter the premises, but before I can take a step, the girl shifts her position into my, on, on my back and speaks. <laughs> Michiru's parents crying. <laughs> Are you crying? Mm. Yeah, I wonder why. I see. Making no further comment, I carry Michiru toward the bathroom. You're filthy. I'll bring a change of clothes, so you focus on getting that dirt off you for now. Everything else can wait until after. Mm. What's wrong? Being alone too scary? The girl smiles a little awkwardly as she speaks. I give her a quick pat on the head, then make my way down to her room to obtain a fresh change of clothes. Hmm. That said, I don't know where anything is in here. These are the ones she's always wearing. Well, that works. Already out of the bath? That was fast. I brought you a change of clothes. Oh no. Not afraid to do it. Her body wrapped up in a towel I left in the changing room, Mitra shuffles around shyly. Nope! Nope, not doing that. Not right now. I need to arrange for your medical checkup and. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Do not make this even worse than it already is. That's right. Oh, do I smell? Sorry. <laughs> Emitru's insistence, I can... My gosh, this is this is the worst. This is actually the worst. You know what? I take it back. Can I play Bear Storming again, please? I don't I don't know if I'm gonna need to mute this, so I'm just gonna preemptively mute it just in case, because I don't think anything good will come of this. It's not the time for a leisurely soak. I opt for a quick shower. But just as I'm finishing up, Mitru comes in as well. Oh. Oh, she's fully clothed. Oh, yay. Okay. False alarm. Hello there. Felt like taking a bath in your clothes? Or maybe you forgot something? She's like, no, I just meant when I was done, you take a bath because you were also filthy. I understand that. But couldn't you wait five minutes for me to come out of the shower? No! No, 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 I remember when Sachi did that, and that was what led to me having to mute the stream. You're a real handful. Alright, if you're doing this, do it quickly. Joink! She says, yeah. Mitru rubs a bar of soap against a washcloth slowly and carefully working up a nice lather. She said, pardon me. The girl proceeds to wash every nook and cranny of my back. Nice gesture, but after five straight minutes of scrubbing, it starts to feel like she's overdoing it a little. All right, that's good enough. She's literally saying the words scrub. Nothing bad yet, but I'm just waiting for it. I told you that's good enough. Cut it out already. Okay, okay, I don't think it's going to be as bad as what Sachi did. If 
Finally abandoning her washcloth, Mitru leans against my back and wraps her arms around me. Must have been pretty lonely down there. Hmm. I'm not going anywhere, Mitru. Interesting CG. Hmm. Turn around, take me true by the waist or the wrist, and draw her to me. Instead of answering, I press my lips to hers. Oh, well, this sort of thing isn't too bad every once in a while. I can't stand people who decide they've saved someone with a little kindness. Human beings exist within their own private bubble of solitude. Our pain and sadness can't be cured by gentle words. Offering gestures of sympathy can make you feel good about yourself, but for the recipient, it's meaningless at best. That's why I chose to bury her alive and almost kill her. People don't need a crutch or a savior. They need to overcome their own suffering or find the strength to accept it. And when someone needs help getting to that point, I'm willing to lend a hand. Are you seriously trying to justify what you did? Really? He... This man... This man has absolutely no sense of introspection. Of course, that doesn't mean I go around offering my support to every sad sack I run into on the street. I'm not some hypocrite politician or cult leader. So what distinguishes the people I willingly assist from those I don't? Hmm. Not sure if there's any clear criteria. Really. Other than whim. Sometimes I just feel like it. I don't like this. Even when it comes to the young lady currently sleeping at my side, fairly pondering is the reason fairly pondering the reason why I helped her doesn't produce a convincing answer. But that's just the way human beings are. No matter how logically you analyze our motives, no matter how thoroughly you investigate the consent context of our actions, every once in a while you'll end up running smack dab into the incomprehensible. I can't comment on how meaningful this particular incident may or may not be, but I'm not unhappy with the way things turned out. Oh good, because I am In any case the tricky part comes next. How, how was that not the tricky part? Oh. Oh, the tricky part is explaining to everybody how she's actually still alive. Oh, yeah. I I really hope he gets he gets his comeuppance. Yuji is the kind of guy who absolutely deserves comeuppance for what he has done. My lord, this is How close to the end are we? Oh my gosh. And now we get to explain to them why we told everyone that she was dead. No, 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 no. You better not just be like, oh, I guess Mitra is back. That's cool. I, I want to see Yuji get get what's coming to him. She's like, I'm not exactly in the best mood right now. Squeak. <laughs> yeah, I kind of just pretended to kill her. And almost actually did. No, 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 Machina! That's, that is not going to fly! These ones. I pinch Mitra's face and stretch her cheeks out to both sides. Ouch. I'm gonna name Yumika are the only two people who are having a semi-appropriate reaction to this. No! 
We need an explanation! I, I would love to know Yuji's thought process on why he thought it was okay to bury her alive. I'm gonna trot over and begins poking at Mitra's chest like a housewife prodding a shrink-wrapped piece of produce. Yeesh! My ears. My ears. Good lord. That is shrill. Makina's voice literally just caused both my ears to get clogged. I am not even joking. Her voice caused both my ears to get clogged and I had to unclog them. Ugh. Okay, that's a that's a little more appropriate. But but also I would be like, um so Yuji, you mind explaining why you told everyone she was dead? I'm not letting Yuji off the hook for this. I don't care what the game does, I am not going to drop this. <laughs> Mitra and Makina link their little fingers together, watching as they swear their oath, Amine heaves a heavy sigh of surrender. Where's Yumiko and her box cutter when you need her? But you can't make a promise like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she was the first one to know. We ran into her on the way back. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Same as it ever was. You better give them all proper apologies. <laughs> what? You! 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 Sack of crap! You're telling me that Michiru needs to apologize? And not you! Yow! Okay, you are officially the worst person I've ever seen in a visual novel. Well, okay, maybe not as bad as some of the Ace Attorney villains, but... Wow! The absolute nerve of this bastard. He is the worst. <laughs> Hey, it's rated M. I can use stronger language. And he deserves it! You know, I'm not vehemently opposed to swearing, I just only swear when it's warranted. <laughs> I can't believe this. This... I have no words. No words that I haven't already said. This is so bad. And so Michiru returned to her friends and her school. She was completely freed of her dependence on medication and that bizarre Sundari act. Oh, well that's good. She spends the rest of her school days as a normal girl. Six pennants hanging on the wall of her room. That's good. A little too neat a conclusion, unfortunately. Honestly, Michiru's just managed to finally face up to one of her multiple problems, nothing more. Oh great, there's more. Yeah, that's right. This is a fully legitimate date. Well, this is not good. 
Because you told me to plan the date, and I decided on a little short-distance sprinting. Listen, the act of running isn't just... The real good ending for this, Yuji goes to jail, she becomes a normal girl who don't need a boyfriend to <laughs> keep her alive. That's how it should have ended. <laughs> hmm. Our light jog concluded, Michiru and I arrive at a certain high spot overlooking the sea. A place that holds memory, many memories for both of us. If, if I don't know about you, but if I were Michiru, I would never want to go back here again, because of I would associate it with the trauma of having my boyfriend bury me alive! <laughs> Yeah, you haven't turned into anyone else since you came back. Something to celebrate, right? For some reason, it doesn't look like she's entirely convinced of that. What do you mean? I reach out and wipe the sweat from Ichiru's cheeks with a hand towel. We went over this before I buried you. I told the girl straight out that if you regain the courage to live, she probably wouldn't have the chance to come out again. And she told me that was all right with her. She understands that body belongs to you. There's nothing to feel guilty about. She did say that. Mitra, my friend, you've only just managed to regain control of yourself. Why go out of your way to... Yuji doesn't deserve this girl. Beat of sweat dangling from the tip of her nose, Mitru stares up at me with a serious expression on her face. It takes an effort to keep a wry smile off my face. Even without the pseudo sundere act, this girl's still a real handful. But compared to forcing herself to act out some character, I suppose it's nice to see her honestly expressing her feelings. Alright. If you insist, I'll try calling the girl out. I do, I do have a method in mind. Same one I used with your medicine. In other words, just a little manipulation of your assumptions. Are you... If you... I've had it up to here with this. Yeah. 